And thanks everyone for tuning in today. Uh, I'm gonna take probably the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes just to talk a little bit about the Kaya Charter Program. Um, so I'll give a little bit of background on uh, who we are as an organization. I'll go through the curriculum uh, just for a little bit and then I'll get into the exam and what to expect. Um, and then as, as Liz mentioned, if you do have questions, uh, please submit them through the Q&A. Uh, we'll try to get to as many of them as we can um, within the, the allotted time. Uh, I believe Liz put out a, a poll um, to all of you coming into the room. So um, if you could put that up, uh, that's awesome. Okay, great. Um, so just wanted to get a sense of uh, who, who is tuned in here and uh, uh, that way I can tailor some of my comments uh, to all of you. So uh, thanks for everyone for uh, putting in the poll questions and uh, uh, we'll go from there. This will be recorded. So I just got a question here on uh, the recording. Uh, so this will be recorded to be available on our website. So um, if you did, if you want to go back and watch this um, or share it with someone, uh, feel free to do that. So a little bit about us. I'll go on to the next slide. Um, so we're a global professional body at Kai Association. Uh, we are dedicated to creating greater alignment, transparency, and education for all investors. Um, although we do have a specific emphasis on the world of alternative investments, uh, we do advocate for the highest ethical standards and uh, provide authoritative, unbiased insight on a broad range of investment strategies and industry issues, key among them being efforts to bring greater diversification to portfolio construction decisions and to achieve better long-term investor outcomes. Uh, we are a member-based organization, so we have uh, just over 11,000, uh, actually creeping up on 12,000 CHI members around the world represented in more than 100 countries. And the types of uh, members that we have are all over the place. So we do have uh, members in senior leadership positions, allocators, uh, GPs, LPs, regulators, and uh, in the academic circles. So before I get into the actual CHIA designation, I want to talk a little bit about just diversification, why diversification um, is important. Uh, we've, we've obviously been coming off of a, a 10 to 12 year bull market here in the United States, um, where diversification really hasn't mattered that much. If you put your money in uh, a couple of publicly traded stocks or an index uh, like the S&P 500, uh, you've been you've done pretty well for yourself, uh, compounding um, mid-teens, uh, depending on uh, your end date and start date, uh, compounded returns over time. But diversification is really all about exposing your portfolio to different uh, risk premiums. Um, so whether or not that's inflation uh, protection, yield enhancement, um, or just exposure to different parts of the economy, uh, the global economy. Diversification um, you know, is supposed to work over the long term. Um, so there are periods like we've had in the past decade where uh, it may not have uh, been, it may not have paid for you to be diversified. But as we look forward and we look at uh, longer market cycles, uh, diversification does uh, tend to yield uh, benefits. But diversification, when you look at alternative investments, is a little bit more complicated than just throwing. Uh, capital at a particular asset class. And here at Kaya, we talk a lot about um, when you look at alternatives, uh, is it really an asset class or is it an industry? And uh, I think that this chart here from Cambridge Associates really shows how difficult it is and how challenging it can be to be in the world of alternative investments um, just because um, of performance dispersion. So on the left-hand side, you can see more traditional asset classes like uh, global equities and fixed income. And on the right-hand side, you can see alternative asset strategies. And you can see that the difference between the median return manager and the 95th percentile um, is relatively narrow in the, in the traditional um, side of things. If you invest in a large cap growth equity manager, um, the, the likelihood of you deviating far from the median large cap growth equity manager um, it may only be at a magnitude of about you know, two, three, four percent. However, you look over at the world of alternatives, uh, whether or not you're looking at hedge funds or private capital, and that dispersion, um, you could drive a truck through. Um, so it could be as wide as 16% if you're going from median to top, but even if you go below that and go to some of the bottom performing managers, you can get up to close to 20, 25, 30% in dispersion. So manager selection, um, due diligence, all of these concepts are things that we cover in our program, and they become increasingly important as you start allocating across different risk uh, spectrums. Um, and part of this is just because if you look at 
the median returns for let's say private equity relative to public equity, um, you may not be better off investing in a median uh, uh, private equity manager and you're paying a lot higher fees to do so. So trying to help um, our candidates and our members navigate through this complex world. So that's where the Kaya Charter Program comes in. Um, and the tagline that we use um, at Kaya is think like an allocator. Uh, one of the most common questions that we get uh, whenever a candidate or a prospective candidate is looking at our program is, who is the target um, person that should be thinking about taking this credential and, and going through this whole process? And what we say is that regardless of whether or not you're an asset allocator, where you're you know, sitting on an endowment or a pension or even in private wealth, um, or you're a manager that's uh, focused on a specific asset class like hedge funds or private equity, I think it really helps all investment professionals to think about the risk, uh, thinking across that risk spectrum and understanding how their strategy or a collection of strategies uh, fit into their portfolio construction process. So when you think about the way that our credential is set up and I'll go through the curriculum here in the next couple of slides, we're really trying to help all of our candidates and all of our members think like an allocator and think across that broad risk spectrum. So let's go through the curriculum real quick. Um, so first, if we talk about level one, so uh, there are two levels to the Kaya credential, uh, to the Kaya curriculum. We're looking at level one here, which we, we term the analyst's approach. Um, fancy way of saying this is a very bottom-up process um, or bottom-up exposure to the world of alternative investments. Um, so we're introducing the individual asset classes and industries to the candidate um, to help them understand um, how do hedge funds work? Uh, how does private equity work? How do real assets work? How do structured products work? And giving you a nice overview of performance, risk and return, um, you know, how you want to think about um, you know, measuring outcomes uh, for each of these different asset classes. And then of course, starting at the beginning with uh, one of the most important parts of our, our curriculum, the ethical component of things. Uh, so the professional standards and ethics. We also have a, a chunk of the uh, curriculum that's dedicated to an introduction to alternatives, which really sets a nice baseline for the overview and the evolution of the industry, uh, quantitative methods so that you are prepared as you look at uh, some of the later readings um, to be able to measure, um, calculate, and understand how each of these uh, work. In terms of the format of the exam, um, it's broken apart into two sections, uh, two hours in each section, 100 questions, multiple choice, um, in both of those sections. And you can see that the coverage of the different asset classes is relatively similar across real assets, hedge funds, private equity, and structured products. Level two, um, which I, I just went through level one, which is that bottom-up experience or the analyst's approach. We say that level two is the allocator's approach or more of that top-down implementation of alternatives. One of the things that you'll notice here is that when you look at the topics or the section uh, titles, we don't actually have anything that's said hedge funds or private equity or real estate. We're not necessarily talking about individual asset classes when you get to level two. It's much more about the implementation of how you put the entire portfolio together. So where, whereas level one was very focused on the individual experience of hedge funds or private equity or real assets, this is all about how does my private equity interact with my real assets or how does my real assets interact with um, my, my hedge funds. Um, so you can see some of the topics that we cover include um, ethics, regulation, and ESG, uh, models and methods, risk management, methods for um, accessing alternative investments, um, importantly, due diligence and selection, selecting uh, managers, which goes back to the chart that I showed earlier with dispersion. So how do you really dig into um, some of the considerations that you should have when um, selecting a manager? And then one of the most interesting things that I think uh, that we incorporate into our curriculum is what we call current and integrated topics. And this is a, a bit of a higher turnover piece of our curriculum. And it's a chance for us to go outside of the kind of core canon of the curriculum and look for current topics. So it could be blockchain, it could be um, impact investing or ESG, um, it could be different trading strategies, but things that may be on the forefront or emerging within the world of alternatives or in the investment industry as a whole. And it's a way for us to um, help candidates go through this process of understanding um, you know, how it works. So current and integrated topics could be eventually part of the canon of the curriculum as it becomes more institutionally 
adopted, it could cycle out depending on um, the dynamic uh, nature of the industry. But it's kind of a nice uh, piece of that uh, curriculum that keeps you current and relevant. And uh, it's something that we offer our members as well um, as we update the curriculum um, each year. A little bit of a different format for level two. So whereas level one um, was two hours for both sections, all multiple choice, level two, while still two hours, um, is a combination of multiple choice and constructive response uh, or short essay. So level one or level two uh, first section is very similar in format to the level one exam. Whereas level two is uh, a collection of uh, vignettes um, where you ask, you're asked uh, you know, questions with short constructive responses, maybe a couple sentences, a few calculations here and there. Um, and you can see just going back up to the topics and the question format, um, at least two of those questions will be dedicated to um, ethics regulation and ESG, and then the current and integrated topics, which I just covered. In terms of accessing the curriculum um, for 2021, uh, while the uh, physical textbook is, is an option to purchase, we also recently just launched a digital learning platform uh, offered through Wiley. Um, so this is a way where uh, you can digitally access the curriculum. You can go through the entire curriculum just like the physical textbook, but it's a little bit more customized and uh, modular in terms of uh, your ability to take notes um, go through, uh, you know, different study plans, building out a study calculator. Um, but one of the cool things about this platform is that while we do offer, um, you know, different uh, learning content um, for the physical textbook, which is available on our website, such as our study guide and workbook, we integrate all of this into the digital um, experience. So it's all in one place um, and something that I would highly encourage those of you who are thinking about this curriculum or already signed up um, to check out. The pricing um, between uh, the online digital uh, curriculum and the physical curriculum is exactly the same. So it's really just a matter of preference for which one um, you would like to take. Um, I noticed that for a majority of you who um, are on here, this is uh, not as relevant for you, but we do have a stackable credential program, which is available to CFA charter holders. So for those of you who are a CFA charter holder, um, and have not gone through the Kaya program historically, you're in good standing with the CFA Institute, um, and you have a digital badge through their BASNO platform, um, you are eligible to apply for the Stackable Credential Program, which um, allows you to move directly to uh, level two. We do offer a number of uh, support tools for our candidates. Um, so we offer a study guide and workbook, which is freely available on the website goes through the keywords, the learning objectives, and sample exercises. Um, as I mentioned before, this both of these are integrated into the digital platform. Um, so if you do opt for that, um, it's all in one place. Uh, we do a series of candidate orientation webinars for those who sign up. So as a candidate, um, you get access to um, the curriculum and exams team um, who will go through a little bit more in depth, uh, some of the types of questions that you may see on the exam, some study tips, and uh, answer all of your questions uh, regarding logistics for exam day. Uh, we offer a study calculator uh, for those of you to plan your course of study. So um, depending on when you decide to start uh, all the way up until exam day, you can plan out how many hours per week or how many hours per day you need to study, help keep yourself on, on track. And then finally, uh, we, we do partner with uh, third party prep uh, providers. So we work very closely with them. We don't endorse any particular uh, prep providers, um, but uh, some candidates find it helpful to uh, work with them um, to help them uh, craft their study plan and some additional um, resources there. Keep in mind that we do write the exam to our own curriculum. So uh, if you do engage with a prep provider, just keep in mind that um, it may be worth going through uh, the, the curriculum that we do offer our candidates. And then finally, we do offer a sample exam, which is available to candidates on our website, which give you, uh, gives you a real uh, testing day experience um, to kind of see what things will look like on the computer-based exam. So this is a, a chart of our historical pass rates um, for um, the Kaya credential. As you can see, it's relatively consistent. Uh, level one has been pretty consistently in the low to mid 50% range. And level two has been pretty consistently in the mid 60% range. 
Of course, uh, March 2020 is, is kind of the outlier um, you see here. Um, COVID-19 uh, had a much smaller class than normal, um, but you can expect that pass rate. Um, you know, we don't target for a particular pass rate. Um, it's, it's all based on, um, you know, the understanding of, of the candidate and the, the testing environment. But um, mid to mid 50% for level one, mid 60% uh, for level two, um, that's been pretty consistent over the past couple of cycles. So some notable dates, um, as you probably know, um, early registration just opened up on Monday. Um, early registration will go all the way through May 17th. Um, and then all the way through March or through April, sorry, through August 9th of 2021, um, regular registration is, is open. Um, I'll get into uh, the, the discounts and, and pricing here in the next slide, but there is a discount for early registration. So if you're thinking about doing this, uh, might be worth to, uh, to get that discount before May 17th. Um, level one exam will be administered August 30th through September 10th. And then level two will be administered um, from September 13th to 24th. Um, we typically say that uh, level one results are available um, around three weeks after the last um, day of the test window. And level two, we say about six weeks um, after the last day of the test window. So in terms of uh, pricing and membership fees, um, for those who are new to the program, there is a program enrollment fee of $400. Uh, the exam registration for both level one and level two is 1250. As I mentioned before, there is an early registration discount. Um, so if you do uh, sign up before May 17th, um, there will be $100 off of your early registration. And then for those of you who are um, unsuccessful on your first attempt or, uh, or your attempt, you can retake the exam um, at each level for $450. Then as I mentioned, uh, the textbook and uh, the online curriculum um, can be bought separately for $125. So uh, no difference in cost there. It's really just a matter of preference. Um, as a member, once you pass level two and you hit the required work experience, uh, membership fees are $350 per year. And then we have some um, adjustments around that based on the type of member and the, the market that you're currently in. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about um, what, it, what it's like to be a member of the association. We have a number of resources available on our website. Uh, most notably and, and relatively new is we've uh, developed a new research section. Um, this, this will get built out over the course of the next couple of months and years as, as new topics and new material uh, get put out. But we have three up there uh, right now. One, just looking at the next decade of uh, where we think alternatives are going. Uh, second is a member exclusive report on due diligence, uh, where we look at the quantitative and qualitative factors of due diligence. And then finally is a new report uh, written and uh, published by our colleagues in Asia on tokenization within alternative investments and how technology is really altering the way that um, investors can access uh, some of these historically illiquid structures. Um, so more on that as, uh, as new material comes out, but I would highly encourage you to check um, those resources out. Um, and you can see some of, the, some of the resources on each of those pages are um, member exclusive. Uh, so as a member, you get access to that. Um, that's available on our website. Um, so most members, um, you know, we, we talk about, uh, you know, the member benefits for the members. Obviously, first and foremost is just the use of the, the Kaya marks and the Kaya designation. Those four letters after your name uh, really showcase proficiency and uh, a high level of knowledge and understanding of this world uh, that we're, we're in of alternatives. Um, then there's also the uh, educational chapter and networking events. So we have 30 chapters around the world in most uh, large financial centers. Hopefully uh, in the back half of this year, or if not early next year, we'll be back to in-person. Uh, but there's a number of virtual chapter events that we've, uh, we've been hosting with our chapter leads in each of those um, areas. Uh, our journal, which is exclusive to Kaya members only, the Journal of Alternative Investments, which is an academically ranked peer reviewed journal uh, with a lot of cutting edge, re cutting edge research in this, in this space. Um, current news and industry research. So we have a very active blog that many of our members uh, both uh, read and contribute to. Um, so just current topics of, of what's happening, different ways of, of thinking about this space. 
um, as well as a, a newsletter that goes out, which is a combination of just educational content, but also um, some of that community aspect of things. So we do member spotlights. Um, you know, you can check in and see what's going on with your fellow uh, Kaya charter holders. And then fifth, uh, the Kaya Career Center. Um, so if you are looking for um, employment um, in this space or you're looking to hire someone, uh, we, have, we, have, we have many people that utilize uh, this Career Center. So a lot of different things that we offer um, you know, for our members uh, to go through this in addition to some of the research and content that we're really focused on. Um, in addition to webcasts like this, where we talk about uh, the Kaya Charter uh, designation, we also put on a ton of educational uh, webcasts for our members and for the industry at large. Um, so, uh, you know, always look at our website. We've always got subject matter experts coming in on the topics of PE, hedge funds, crypto, you name it, we're, we're covering it. Um, and as I mentioned, chapters, while currently virtual, um, that uh, will hopefully change as uh, uh, things start to open back up, uh, depending on the location that you're, you're in. So that concludes my uh, prepared remarks. Uh, we've got a couple of, of names here for our industry relations team. So if you're interested in finding out more, um, you can always reach out to them. Um, but I will pause there. And, and Liz, do you have any questions that... Um, you know, might be typically common that uh, we can address here for the group. Yeah, um, so I do see that we have a ton of questions coming in, but we do have a couple FAQs just to go over quick. Um, how long does it take to study per level and when should I start my studies for the September exam window? Yeah, that's a great question. We get a lot of, of people who ask that. So obviously it's gonna vary based on your personal experience. Um, but most candidates typically study between 200 and 250 hours per level. Um, so depending on when you decide to sign up and start studying, um, that's, that's really up to you. Uh, we would highly encourage you start earlier than later. Uh, we do have some people that will start immediately um, after they, they sign up at the beginning of the registration cycle. Um, and you know those, those who put the time in, um, tend to be the, the more successful ones. So at 200 to 250 hours per, uh, per level. Okay, and um, what is the difference between the Kaya program and the Fundamentals of Alternative Investments FAI program? Um, should I take FAI before registering for the Kaya program? Yeah, also a really good question. Um, we get that question a lot from uh, prospective candidates. Um, so the Fundamentals of Alternative Investments program is another certification program that we offer um, it's a certificate, so not a charter. Um, 20 hours um, of, uh, of material that's covered there. And you can think of the fundamentals program as an executive summary of the level one curriculum of, of Kaya. So uh, rather than putting in 200 to 250 hours, you're putting in 20 hours. Um, it strips out a lot of the quantitative information. So it, it tends to be really good for those who are interested in this space, wanna dip their toes in, um, and just get a broad understanding of, uh, of, the, of the space and what the Kaya Charter might cover. Um, for those who complete the, the fundamentals program, uh, we do offer a discount um, for those who move on to level one. So if you are kind of interested in, in moving into this space, but you're not quite sure if you wanna sign up for the, the Kaya designation, that's an option, uh, certainly. We tend to find that um, it, it's two different camps. So people who are wanting to go for the Kaya, typically go for the Kaya, and then people who wanna go for fundamentals tend to go for fundamentals, um, but there is some overlap there. Um, so uh, that's a, that information is available on our website as well. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, um, please visit kaya.org. Great, thanks Aaron. Um, just a couple more. What is the work experience requirement to hold the charter? Yeah, so when you pass level two and you um, are, are looking to apply for membership, in order to hold the charter and become a member, uh, we require 12 months of work experience. Okay, and just one last one um, before we get to the audience questions. What do you think about the prep providers for the Kaya program? Do you have a preferred one? Yeah, and um, I, I mentioned this earlier, um, we don't have a preferred prep provider. We work with all of them um, equally. So we do list them on our website um, and it's really just a preference of the candidate who they prefer to work with. Um, but as I mentioned before, we do test, um, you know, to the, um, the official Kaya curriculum. Um, so even if you do work with a prep provider, I would highly encourage you to uh, read through, through the official curriculum because that's where uh, the test questions are linked. 
any others? Uh, no, I just see some um, some okay. coming in in the Q and A from the audience. Yeah. So um, there's a question: Will there be any major differences between the fall 2021 exam uh, versus the fall 2020 exam? Um, and that's a that's a great question. Uh, we did update the curriculum for um, level two. So level one uh, is the same for. So when you look at fall 2020 versus fall 2021, level one is the same. Uh, level two is uh, slightly different. We went through an update um, for that. So if you are a level two candidate, you will see some differences. It's about 40% um, turnover and change at, at level two. If you're at level one, it's the same uh, material. Moving forward, so when you look at uh, 2022 and beyond, we will be doing an annual refresh of the curriculum. So anywhere from 15 to 20% of the curriculum will um, be updated and uh, potentially turned over. So, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind, but those, those changes will be relatively, um, it'll evolve over time. Um, there's another question here, how are Kaya and CFA similar and different? Um, do they complement each other? Please clarify. Um, I, I think that your your comment about uh, complementing each other is is a good one. You know, I'm I'm a CFA charter holder. I'm a Kaya charter holder as well. Um, you know, the uh, CFA program have a, I have a lot of respect for, and and we at Kaya have a lot of respect for CFA Institute. Um, CFA covers a lot of uh, stuff in their curriculum, so. Um, and, a, and a lot of focus on the traditional. Um, so traditional investments, stocks, bonds, um, you know, they're, they've moved a lot more into private wealth. Kaya is much more focused and gets a little bit deeper into the world of alts. Um, so if you think about the complementary nature of that, um, I think that there are complementary designations. Um, but again, you know, for those, uh, as I mentioned before, um, regardless of the seat that you sit in uh, and whether or not you are a CFA charter holder or not, um, you know, Kaya is very focused on thinking like an allocator and thinking across a broad uh, spectrum. So um, you do you do gain um, a lot of additional knowledge going through the Kaya program, and there's very little overlap in terms of coverage, especially at level two. Um, another thing on the, on change. Um, are there any discounts uh, for fundamentals uh, for the Kaya program? Yes, as I mentioned, uh, if you go through the fundamentals program, there is a discount for those who decide to move on to the level one uh, curriculum. Um, the textbooks, is the digital version available after the exam? Do you get to keep it or does that subscription um, expire? Um, so when you do sign up, there is a, a longer time period for you um, as, a, as a candidate and let, you know, let's say you, you sign up for level one, you get access to that digital uh, curriculum and you pass, move on to level two. That level one digital curriculum will still be available for you after you pass. There is a timeline on it, but I do think it's a couple of years. Um, so I, I, uh, I believe it's three years uh, that you, have, you still have access to that. And as we update that curriculum, uh, those updates will be available to you as well. Um, when does early registration for March exams begin? Um, and I'm assuming this question is for March of 2022. Uh, we do open up the March um, registration uh, right after the level two exam window closes. So um, I think when I was looking back here, um, so September 24th. So I would expect either late September, early October, uh, we will open up um, registration. Um, is there a CE requirement for membership? Uh, there is not. We currently don't require CE, although we do put on a lot of continuing education webcasts. At this point, um, there is no requirement to hold the designation. Um, uh, for, for retakes, is there a discount for a second chance? Yes. Um, so if you uh, are unsuccessful at one of the levels and want to retake, the retake fee is 450 US dollars. Um, would previous work as a real estate portfolio manager count towards uh, membership and the required 12 months of the job? Um, that is a, a question for our CMR team, but uh, yes, I, I would, without promising here live on the spot, um, you know, it, any kind of involvement in the investment industry um, is, is going to be relevant. Um, So I see a lot of questions here about 
um, you know, different countries and, and getting access to the, the materials and the, and the curriculum. If you do have issues with uh, getting access, and I can't answer all of these here on the spot, um, reach out to our uh, candidate and member relations team and they can help you, um, depending on where your location is, help you work through any logistics that might be, um, you might see. Uh, typical career options for those who become Kaya members. Um, as I mentioned, we do have members that are across the board. So those, uh, you know, we have allocators who are sitting in um, pensions, foundations, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, um, private wealth. We'd also have them on the asset management side, um, working for some of those, the large asset management firms that you're all familiar with. Um, maybe a GP uh, at a private capital firm. Um, so really the, you know, the job opportunity is, is pretty wide, but especially for those that are operating in the alternative investment field, um, you know, this is the global gold standard for the credential. Um, do you have to take level one and level two in the same period, or can you split them between September and March? I, I think the question is, uh, we, we don't, you're not able to take both levels in the same testing period. So you would have to split them between March and September. Um, most uh, candidates are able to get through the program in about 12 to 18 months. Um, if you are um, really going for it, you're able to, you know, you could sit for level one here in September and take level two in March and, and be through the program um, by then. Um, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. So you're not able to take um, both levels in the same testing period. Um, we have a question here on, on online proctoring and I'll kind of broaden this. So we do, we do offer online proctoring for our candidates. So um, while this is a computer-based uh, program, um, so you do go and take your exam in a Pearson View testing center. We also offer online proctoring. Um, so you can take uh, the exam in the comfort of your own home. Um, this is something that we instituted uh, mid-year mid last year. Um, so that, that is an option for all of you. Um, I would say that if you are concerned about internet connection or um, you, know, you have small children at home or, or something like that, um, I would encourage you to go to a testing center just so you have peace of mind. I know on the on the exam day, you don't want to worry about any externalities. Uh, but for those of you who are interested, um, you know, we do offer the online proctoring um, as an option. There's a lot of other questions here more on logistics. Um, so again, reach out to our CMR team if you're interested um, in, in any logistical questions, whether it's shipping or finding a testing center. Um, so on and so forth. So I think for today that uh, concludes the, the remarks. I appreciate all of you uh, tuning in and, and thanks for all of your questions. Again, reach out to our candidate and member relations team um, if you do have further questions more specific to your individual situation. Um, but again, thanks everyone for tuning in and uh, hopefully uh, we, we look forward to you uh, going through the program and, and becoming a member.